in um not yet i'll i'll ask you to share your screen how's that um okay let's see all right we have six participants on so we have i think we have just about everybody welcome everyone and i wanted to um introduce you to danny becker from rocky mountaineer and he is going to give us a wonderful presentation about the canadian rockies and this is being recorded. So if you want the recording after tonight's webinar, just let me know. And I'll also post it on our website with a link. So without further ado, Danny, would you like to share your screen and, and start the presentation? Absolutely. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. And let me just close a couple of things down if you don't mind in my, in my computer. Otherwise I'm going to have some uh, noise in the background. So one second. Sure. And while you're doing that, you know, behind me is um, Lake Louise, which I was at a couple summers ago, which you can experience when you're on the Rocky Mountaineer. And behind Danny is the, the train cars, of course. So that's right. Okay, I'm ready to share my screen and All let right. me put these two little buttons here. Sure. Okay, yep, that works. That works. That works. And let me hit the slideshow and then I'll be ready here. All right. Well, thanks again, Lori, for having me tonight. And uh, thanks to, to you all for joining us. My name is Danny Becker, as you can see on the screen there. That's a, a picture of me in one of our Go Leaf cars uh, in 2016, just uh, literally just a couple of weeks after I started uh, with the company. Uh, so a few years back, I've been with the company now just, just over five years. And it's a very family-oriented company, very um, employee-oriented, and most of all, a very um, a very guest-friendly travel experience. And um, I'm anxious to tell you about our, our Canada routes tonight. And um, so, let me just go ahead and get right into that. So, why Rocky Mountaineer? Well, that's why you're here, right? Is to learn, you know, kind of how we do things. And and when we talk about the Rocky Mountaineer experience, we really we talk about a lot of things, but we really only focus on about five or six key attributes of the experience. First of all, we are not about transportation. We're about seeing the Canadian Rockies in luxury. And that's really an important distinction. Um, this is not from point A to point B, it's, it's enjoying it completely, you know, in between. And uh, so, as I mentioned, you know, we focus on certain things and one of those, and probably one of the most important ones, is our all-domed, state-of-the-art fleet of rail cars. This is one of our brand new um, Gold Leaf 3.0, and by that I mean third generation. 3.0 is third generation to us, and um, these cars are built. They they hold 68 guests. They're built by a company called Stadler in Germany, and um, they uh, are 10 million dollars a piece. So that's a high-end RV, right? I mean, that's um, that's that's way up there. And then and and once you board these cars, you really get a feel of why they cost that much. Um, they're very sophisticated, as you can see there. That little uh, uh, sort of um, interruption in the glass there, or what that change in the glass, that's actually a new technology um, that that Rocky Mountaineer um, had Stadler build into these cars. And it actually uh, automatically, well, I should say automatically, our coast are able to um, push a button and it, and it, depending on how much sunlight we're in, it actually darkens that portion. So you won't uh, kind of be looking right in the sun there if, if, if for whatever reason the train is stopped. So that's just one of the new uh, technological uh, things about these cars, but that's the first thing we focus on. And we have another class of service too. It's called Silverleaf and we'll go over those in just a minute. We have, we have 10 of those brand new goalie cars, by the way, in our fleet. And um, the next thing we focus on is our gourmet cuisine. Um, Rocky Mountaineer is known for this. We have a, we have a Michelin trained chef in every goalie car, uh, our executive chefs, and there's usually one and sometimes two per train. Um, and they, um, they're constantly going back and forth between the, uh, the goalie kitchens to make sure everything is done uh, perfectly. Uh, so that's the next thing we focus on. After that, our dreamy hotel partners, we do not uh, sleep on the train unless you just want to take a cat nap. 
but uh, you, you want to be careful with that because you'll miss a lot if, so, or sometimes depending on how long your nap is of course um, but that is uh, one of our hotel partners uh, we so we put our guests up in nice uh, hotels every night that's the famous Fairmont Banff Springs uh, probably one of the two or three most famous hotels in all of Western Canada, if not Canada as a whole. And, um, and then, and I'll show you some of the other hotel partners uh, here in just a minute as well. We don't, we don't just deal with Fairmont, but we, uh, Fairmont is by far our number one hotel partner in Western Canada. The next thing we focus on is our three stunning seasons. Our overall season is from mid-April through mid-October. And uh, this year it's a little bit shorter than that. Um, and it, we're starting in, um, in late April, at least that's the plan. We'll, we'll see uh, if that goes as planned, but we're optimistic uh, at least if, you know, for, for, for the latter part of the season and, and hopefully even more than that. Um, it's just gonna depend on, on how things go. But the, our, these are our three seasons of spring, summer, and fall. Uh, spring is, uh, it's a great time to go. Uh, the prices are traditionally lower, and um, it, it, the uh, ice and is melting, the snow is melting, the, the animals are coming out in force, and it's just, uh, you know, it's, everything is teeming, and you can really tell it's kind of coming back to life. That middle picture is, the, is bigger for a reason. It's the largest part of our season. Um, the, uh, I would say the June, mid-June to mid-September time frame. The days are longer and warmer, and that's when most people are traveling on Rocky Mountaineer. But my favorite happens, happens to be the fall, and it's gotten a lot more popular in the last few years with us uh, because people are recognizing it's less crowded in some of those areas at that time of year, and it is, um, it is stunningly beautiful. Um, the, the lakes are, are pristine, and um, you, you can sometimes in the later part of the season get a little bit of snow and it's, it's crisp outside and it's just a great time to go. I love, I love going in the fall. The next thing we focus on is our customized journeys. Um, we, and, and we're very proud of this, on either side of your rail trip, your, your, your package is highly customizable. Um, so the rail trip itself is you're either silver leaf or gold leaf, right? But on either end, you can add hotels and meals and excursions and and uh, so we can customize the, the, the front end and the back end for you uh, pretty significantly. But uh, I love this um, slide in, in particular because it shows these two ladies looking at the bridge they just crossed over. And this happens to be the last car on the train, obviously. And uh, it's not called the caboose. We call it the trailing dome. We think that's a much, uh, a much classier name for our uh, last car on the train. But, but uh, we try to always make it a goal leaf car to give somebody this incredible 180 degree uh, view out the back of the um, uh, of that goalie car. So, and then the next thing we focus on is our world-class service. Um, you know, you can have all the great $10 million cars and, and you can have wonderful food and wonderful scenery, but if you don't have the service to go along with it, something's missing, right? And, and we're known for that and we're very proud of that. And we've uh, kind of adopted this saying about ourselves because uh, we hear it a lot from our guests, both on the train and at events and from guests we've, you know, that have been with us in the past or we see it on comic cards and we've sort of adopted the name life, purveyors of life-changing experiences. So um, we, uh, we take that to heart. That is our, our route map. And um, you can see that um, our two main gateways, and it'll show you some pictures of, of those in just a minute, are Vancouver and Calgary. Some actually do fly into Edmonton as well. That's a possibility. But mainly, I would say uh, Calgary and Vancouver. And uh, we have three routes. The red route is called First Passage to the West. The blue route is called Journey Through the Cr Clouds. And uh, not Journey Through the Crowds. Uh, that wouldn't be good. Uh, and then um, the green route is our longest route. It's our newest route. Um, and it is called Rainforest to Gold Rush. And you can go either eastbound or westbound uh, on Rocky Mountaineer. And so this is the core of your package, this, this rail route. Or you can do what we call a circle journey. And we, I'll show you an example of that in a, in a few minutes as well. But uh, in a circle journey is where you combine these routes to do the entire perimeter. Uh, and there's multiple ways actually to do that. But um, 
But this this is the core, and then we add uh, the the beautiful stays at the Fairmonts and and the excursions and the bus transfers and uh, and all of that. We add that in to create a create your dream package. So this is the the shot of Vancouver. If you haven't been there, you need to go. It's a cosmopolitan city. It's it's got so much to offer. It's it's just amazing. It really is. It um, it has everything in my opinion, um, and it, you know, there's a shot of the cruise ship terminals. Our headquarters is actually in that downtown area and, um, and all of the hotels we use in downtown Vancouver are very, very close uh, to our rail station. So that's Vancouver and then next is Calgary. So if you're going westbound out of Calgary, that involves a little bit more of a motor coach trip from Calgary to Banff, but on the front end of your trip, but, uh, but that's our other major gateway there. <laughs> Let me back up on, let me just set this up real quick. This is a, a shot of our, a quick little video, just 20, 20 seconds or so um, of our, um, our train station in Vancouver. And it's a beautiful facility. And I just wanted to show you what a festive atmosphere it is. So like I said, only about 20 seconds here on this little video. Uh, very first departure of 2018. Imagine that rain, a, a little bit of rain in Vancouver, uh, BC, but um, um, good time was had by all. And that's not just, be, you know, you saw those, all, all of our uh, um, uniformed uh, employees out there waving the train goodbye. That's not just because that was the first departure of 2018. That happens on every departure. Um, it's something that's a tradition on Rocky Mountaineer and, and our employees love going out there and waving the train goodbye. And uh, usually that happens, you know, two or three times a week, depending on which um, which station uh, you're you're leaving from. So uh, these are some of our hotel partners, and and um, the the top left is of course the Chateau Lake Louise, and we'll see another picture of that momentarily. The top right is the La Germaine Calgary. Um, bottom left is the famous Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge, and the middle bottom is the um, the, the Fairmont Bam Springs. Just a different view of that. Uh, from what we saw earlier in the bottom right is an interior shot at the Four Seasons Whistler. So, um, and, you know, those are some of our gold leaf partners. We actually do have a lot of silver leaf partners as well. And an example of that would be uh, the Sheridan Wall Center um, in, um, in Vancouver. And I think that middle left picture is actually one of the rooms at Sheridan Wall. I'm not sure, but um, all of our hotels are great, but I, I just, I, my wife and I love Fairmonts and, and, um, you know, just can't, can't get enough, uh, enough of that great service and atmosphere that Fairmont provides. And there's a, you know, a great example of one of the best shots I've ever seen of the Fairmont Banff Springs. It's, it's really a very historic property. They've added on to it over the years. This is where the, the rail lines from east to west met, right? And, and you can see right there's a gorgeous picture of the Bow River. And there's actually a rafting trip going on out there, it looks like. Uh, you can see their 18-hole golf course. They have horseback riding. Um, it's just a phenomenal place. And, um, you know, it, it, I, would, I would recommend, if you can, um, get a package that, that you stay um, two nights each in Banff and Lake Louise. And I'll, I'll explain that here in a minute. But here's Lake Louise. This is looking at the hotel from, on the, from the other side of the lake. But you get an idea of how gorgeous that lake really is, and and you know some people think those photos are actually touched up sometimes, but that's not an exaggeration in any way, shape, or form. That's what it looks like, and you kind of have to blink your eyes and and uh, and realize that that's that's real. And it's a substance called rock flour that drains 
down into the lake from the mountains, from the glaciers, and, and it creates that beautiful blue color on the surface. So this is what I was talking about. This is a, a kind of our standard package using our most popular route, the, uh, the red route, the first passage to the west. And um, this is called first passage to the west highlights. My favorite would be one called, if, if I'm gonna do a one way, uh, either eastbound or westbound, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but it would be a sister package to this. It's called First Passage to the West at Leisure. And there's two days each in Vancouver, excuse me, in Lake Louise and Banff. And I think that one actually comes with one day in Vancouver, but you can always add another day there. So that's, if you're doing a one way, that's probably what I would recommend. And then here's an example of what I, I mentioned earlier, the Golden Circle via Whistler. And um, this is, um, very, very popular. And we hear a lot of people that have been on one ways on Rocky Mountaineer that they, they'll come back and they'll say they loved it. They had a wonderful trip, but they wanted more time on the, on, on the rail, on the train. And, um, so a lot of people will come back and do a full circle journey. And, and as you can see, that's five days on the train and, um, all together and then some beautiful stops. Um, this one in particular has, two nights in Banff, two nights in Lake Louise, and two nights in Jasper. And there's actually one called the Grand Rail Circle that has three nights in Banff that's almost exactly like this. That's, that's the only difference. Some of the awards and recognition, um, Rocky Mountaineer is a highly awarded travel experience. Um, uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with a, a marketing term called, um, it just left my brain, what, what is it? Uh, NPS score, Net Promoter Score. Um, the marketing geeks love this and I've come to love it too because we have one of the highest, not just in the travel industry, but in any industry. It's an 82. We had an 82 uh, NPS score in, um, in 2019. And what that is a measure of is how likely our guests are um, to, um, to recommend Rocky Mountaineer to friends and family. So really proud of that. And uh, you can see the other awards we won here too. Um, service levels. Let's talk about our two service levels. We have silver leaf and gold leaf. Gold leaf is, uh, are the, are the bi-level um, cars that uh, we, we looked at earlier, the $10 million cars. And, and uh, there's, a, there's two spiral staircases, by the way, on either end of that car. And they go from the upper level to the lower level. And the lower level is where the, the dining area is and the restrooms and the outdoor viewing platform. And um, you can see that, um, that it's just a, it, 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 the, the way it's designed is spectacular. I mean, it really is. It, uh, and that's, we, we were already talked about the, uh, the service and the food on board. And again, that car holds 68. And what I was trying to remember to tell you was that there's two seatings on, on Gold Leaf as well. So uh, as soon as you board in the morning, the, um, the host will actually divide the car in half and the first group will go to uh, downstairs to the to uh, Gold Leaf breakfast. And then about an hour and 15 minutes later, they'll switch. So that's how we do uh, breakfast and lunch on, on the Gold Leaf cars. Now, Silver Leaf, uh, these cars hold 52 and they were actually recently completely refit and redone to the tune of about $5 million a piece. Huge picture windows. And um, the difference in service is that food, the food is excellent on both. But uh, in Silver Leaf, everything is served at your seat. All meals, snacks, and drinks, and everything is served seat side, like first class on an airline. Only much more of it and much better, I would say, um, without hesitation. Um, so here is, are two of the Gold Leaf cars. Um, and um, you can see how much taller they are. That's actually an advantage going down the tracks, by the way. And um, it's just it's just a great thing to be able to sit to be sitting up that high, uh, because you're looking over the trees most often instead of kind of at the trees on some other experiences. So um, that and there's the upper level from an interior shot there, and that gives you an idea too of, of the amount of glass that you have to look through, and everything is included on the train. By the way, um, you will want for nothing on the train. If they keep it coming all day long in the form of drinks and snacks and wine. And, and it's, it, when you get off the train uh, each day on any of our routes, you're typically people just go settle in their hotel and they're not hungry at all uh, because you've been fed and, and pampered all day long. So 
Um, but that's a beautiful shot of the upper level. And by the way, most of those, most of those seats there uh, swivel. And so if you have two cup, uh, couples that want to face each other, uh, they have a little, um, a little table that hooks onto the wall that goes in the middle. And so you can put your drinks on there and they, so the host can actually swivel that for you. Um, there's a little pedal on the bottom. It, not all of the seats do that, but I think about 90% of them do. So, um, and there's a, the Gold Leaf dining area downstairs. That's one of the, uh, the really nicely done four person uh, booths uh, downstairs. And, and you can see how big the picture windows are there as well um, on, in the dining area on the Gold Leaf cars. And Silver Leaf, there's an exterior uh, shot of one of the silver leaf cars. And again, they, they, they completely refit these cars. They're almost fully domed like the gold leaf cars, but they're sort of uh, domed in the, in the top corners. But you can see from these, this shot how big those picture windows are. Very, very comfortable seats as well um, in, in silver leaf. And again, this car holds 52. But um, the, these windows are much bigger actually than the ones in the upper level of the gold leaf car because this is all all one car right and you're not it's not two different levels here so um I, my point is they're you know both classes of service are, are are fantastic they're just different um so um we wanted to intentionally make it hard to choose so there's uh, some of the dessert service on silver leaf and that picture gives you a good idea of of what uh, how much room there are there is between the seats as well and um, our, our promotion uh, for that's going on right now is called 31 is the new 30. And the reason we chose that name is because we were not able to run at all in 2020, as, as some of you might know, um, but we are excited and ready to run in, um, in 2021. That is if, the, if and when the Canadian uh, government opens the border and, and we, we think that will happen eventually. And, but this is our promotion. Um, it's, you know, again, and it's our anniversary promotion. We, our anniversary was supposed to be last year. That would have been 30 years. And uh, so that's why we chose this name of 31 is the new 30, but it's basically three perks. And um, for a, a, an eight day package or more, and um, you can do a free hotel night, a free private car airport transfer, and a free dinner. And that offer expires April 2nd. They, they may extend that, we, we just don't know at this point. So that is for 2021. And um, by the way, 2021, you can, if it's a brand new booking, you can, as of February 4th, you can put down your 20% deposit and it's fully refundable up until 30 days. Um, and so at 30 days, if you, you know, up until 30 days, if you say, okay, no, I'm not confident I want to travel this year, you still get two free date changes and one free name change. So let's say you have four people in a booking, as long as one name stays the same, uh, then you can change the uh, you know, name in the booking as well, so, or names, and, um, and along with those two free date changes. So you can move to later into 2021 or even into 2022 um, as well. So that's for 2021 departures. And we actually do for the first time have our 2022 or I should say our next year promotion already in our system. And um, you can put down a 20% a deposit and it is fully refundable until uh, December 3rd of this year. So a lot, of, a lot of flexibility there. We know that's really required these days. And so um, just keep that in mind that, you know, there's a lot of flexibility built in uh, whether you want to, traveling with us in 2021 or 2022. So just a quick video, and let me back it up and start it again. Um, we do these collaborative videos periodically with BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation. And, and uh, this gentleman is an artist. We brought him on a, a couple of years ago, several years ago, actually. And I, I like playing this video because it re he really is very eloquent in the way he talks about his Rocky Mountaineer experience. It's only two minutes long, and then I think we're actually done, and we'll be able to take some uh, questions there if you'd like to, Lori. So let's watch this quick two-minute video here. I grew up wanting to 
capture the memories that I saw around me, wanting to be that guy, the guy that created the image that went with the narrative. I try to capture the essence of an experience because I don't want it to fade in my memory. I grew up in a Midwestern rail town with the sound of trains rolling by at night, the sound of their whistles. Those have always been magical sounds for me. I've traveled and painted all over the world. I've never been to the Canadian Rockies. And from the very beginning, from rolling out of, of Vancouver, every minute, every direction I look, it is a painting. The thing that struck me most visually about the whole journey was the transitions between temperate rainforest in Vancouver to a semi-arid experience rolling into Kamloops. And then climbing into the Rockies, suddenly the plants change, the gradients of the river change. From the moment I stepped on, I couldn't believe the totality of the experience. It was visual, it was sensory in every aspect, from the food, the conversations, the sounds, like being surrounded by family. It's mind-blowing to have that perception of life, but then to get off Rocky Mountaineer and find out that getting there is just as good as the going. To actually walk into those vistas and have your feet on the ground and to breathe the air and feel the wind and the coolness of the wind off the snow is a priceless gift. The details of the journey on Rocky Mountaineer that will remain with me are those of looking at the track that we've just traveled on as we move away from the life I knew before the experience towards the life that I know now. Looking up the track and knowing that I'm on that train. I'm actually part of it. It's not just a train in the distance, but I'm connected. It's sort of an elemental experience, which I think all good art should be. you enjoyed that and uh with that Lori, i will um see if you uh have any anyone that has any questions and or yeah. thoughts. thank Go you ahead. danny i never get tired of that video if you have a question you can put it in the um the q a and i'll go ahead and read that to danny which is down on the bottom of your screen toward the bottom right one question that i had that came in before our um our meeting today was if you, let's say you're with a group and you have some people in the gold car and some people in silver, can they see each other throughout the day somewhere on the train? Uh, no, we, because of the, the COVID protocols and even really to some extent we were doing this before, we, it, it's not um, necessarily a straight passage from one, one train car to the other. It sometimes can be a little bit winding and and you know, so we we completely discourage that. Um, so the best thing would be to to you know travel together and link. Let us link the bookings and travel in the same class, so we can put you in the you know in the same car. I know that maybe not the answer people always want to hear, but um, we we just don't allow any intra car you know travel, so to speak. Okay, but and Cam loops and linking them together will hopefully put them in the same hotel and. Absolutely. Your best to do that. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions from from the people on today? If you want to put them in the Q and A real quick, go ahead and do that. If you if you don't and you send me an email, I'll go ahead and get those answered for you and, and get back to you. So, uh, um, at this point, Danny, I think that we've. Oh, here comes a question. Okay, can you give us an idea about what excursions are popular? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would say probably the most popular excursion in Western Canada is our Icefields Parkway tour. It's, I call it a super excursion because it's a, a day long tour and we, we do it two ways. We do it either from um, Jasper to Lake Louise or Lake Louise Jasper or halfway up and back. So I guess that's three ways. Um, and it is uh, the Oscars Parkway. It's the Athabasca Glacier. And they have a welcome center there. It's got a great buffet lunch. Uh, you go in there and you can, uh, you know, browse in the, um, 
the gift shop and and eat the lunch and then they give you a time to board a, a separate motor coach to just go five minutes over to the, the glacier and then you board a um what is called an arctic explorer and you go up on the glacier and everybody disembarks the arctic explorer and it's pretty fascinating because you're able to climb you know, a pretty steep glacier um because of that arctic explorer those things or hundreds of thousands, uh, hundreds of, and thousands of dollars to both purchase and maintain, and it's pretty fascinating. And they talk about the glacier a lot. Don't do like I did though, and wear my top siders up there because you, you step off the motor or the uh, the Arctic Explorer into you know frozen pools of water, and my feet were wet the rest of the afternoon. So don't do that. Uh, uh, be smarter than me. But that's the one I would say. And there's a lot of other good ones. The Malign Lake Cruise. Is very popular out of um, out of Jasper, um, so I could I could keep going on that one. But um, some tremendous um, excursions around the Jasper area as well. Okay, I know the Icefields Parkway. When I was there, some people were doing it in flip flops, which wasn't not the well, smartest thing. <laughs> maybe I'm not as, as dumb as I thought then. I, you know. <laughs> so you're not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Danny. Does the silver leaf and gold leaf stay at different hotels? And um, I know that in Kamloops, I don't think that matters, but when they're choosing the other hotels in Vancouver and in the Canadian Rockies area. Yes, yeah, so let me start with, uh, with Kamloops. And we do this in all of our interim stops um, in Canada, that's Kamloops, Whistler, Quinnell, uh, and then in, on our new US route, it's uh, Linwood Springs, Colorado. Um, but we, because those are smaller mountain towns and we include the hotel in those towns, even in our rail only trips, we include that in, in you know, no, in no additional charge that should, we, we have to manage that inventory that we include. It. So there's not any, uh, we don't classify silver leaf or gold leaf in Kamloops or any of those infant stops. So to take that one step further, Banff and Lake Louise and Jasper and Calgary and, and, in Vancouver, we do. We have silver leaf hotels and gold leaf hotels. And I'll tell you, they're all nice. And but as I mentioned earlier, I'm a Fairmont fan. So, um, you know, give me a, a Fairmont, um, you know, on the water there in Vancouver any day. There's actually um, there's I think four Fairmonts in Vancouver. Uh, the one I believe we're using is the Pacific Rim or the um, there's another one right next door. The name is escaping me, but anyway, I'm rambling. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, but that's how we do it. Yeah, Silver Lake and Gold Leaf Hotels in the other areas. I also know that for some people that I've customized when they might have wanted Silver Leaf on the train, but Gold Leaf Hotels or vice versa, we can mix and match your package to to be whatever you'd like to be. Yeah, yeah, and that's why, and that's what I meant uh, earlier when when I said it's highly customizable on either end. If you want to. Do gold leaf on the on the on the train, which a lot of people do, and and you know since you're only in your hotel rooms uh, one or two nights on average, uh, you know save some money in that area. Then um, we have people that do that all the time. Yeah. Okay. And we actually uh, they do opposite of that too. They'll do silver leaf uh, on the train occasionally, and and gold leaf hotels. It really depends on what you want. Sometimes it's a matter of availability too. It is. It certainly is. Very close in. Yeah. How many days is the circle trip versus the one way? Um, that circle journey that we saw earlier was about a 11, either 10 night, 11 day or 11 night, 12 day, somewhere around in there. Um, but it's it's a nice trip. And and we I mean, it's amazing how we've seen those those circle journeys increase over the last few years. I've been with the company five years and it, it just seems to, we, we see more and more of them because people want that rail time and and you, you get so many good stays at, in some, so many beautiful places too, so. Okay, and then the last question is about what's included. And on the train, I think you mentioned that it's all included, the, the, um, all the drinks, including alcoholic drinks are included. Right. Um, and the only thing that's not included on the train is, are your gratuities. And you can pay those on, you know, in cash at the end of the trip or on a credit card. Um, and um, 
and we have a suggested gratuity amount that we post on our website and all that. And um, that's just su suggested. There's no no pressure on that at all. Um, and then, and we, as you can, as I've already mentioned, you know, you can uh, customize the rest of your trip. Where, let's say, you don't want to do the Icefield Sparkway tour. There are other tours in the Banff Lake Louise area that we can substitute. And if you want more free time in the Banff area, because there's a lot to do and see in Banff, uh, you know, we can we can leave those excursions out. You know, I mean, it, that's what I meant when I said it's really highly customizable on either end of the rail trip. Great. And I know that most of the hotels are within walking distance of Banff town. Um, so that depending on where you stay, you might be right in the, the heart of the town. Even I, when I was there, I walked from town to the Fairmont in Banff. And uh, it's a nice walk along a, a really pretty river. It is, it's a very nice walk. The only hotel that we use in Banff that is not in walking distance is called the Rimrock. It's a beautiful hotel, it's right underneath um, Sulphur Mountain. Uh, and by the way, that's one you don't wanna miss if you go to, if you stay at all in, in Banff. Um, do the Sulphur Mountain gondola because uh, the top of it is stunning. Um, it, you see a, a beautiful 360 degree view of the Bow Valley, um, especially on a clear day. It's just a no miss um, excursion. And they're, they're, they have you know, coffee shops at the, the base and at the top. And um, I just can't emphasize enough how, what a great um, excursion that is to the uh, Sulphur Mountain gondola. I agree, that is a beautiful view. Well, Danny, I wanna thank you. And for more information, you can always contact us at Vacation Designers and email us at info at vacationdesigners.net. And we hope that all of you can experience the Rocky Mountaineer sometime next year or in the future. So thank you so much, Danny. Thank you, Lori, and talk to you soon. And thanks to everybody for listening and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the train. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.